Welcome to Assay TV. I'm here in uh, Cape Town with Nigel Ferguson, who is the Managing Director of AVZ Minerals. And uh, they are focused on a number of projects in the DRC, particularly uh, the Monono Lithium project. So Nigel, welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about Monono. What have you got there? Uh, Monono, <laughs> according to us, we're, we're claiming it's the largest hard rock, uh, undeveloped lithium resource in the world. Mm. Um, it's about 500 kilometres north of uh, Lubumbashi, um, and we currently have a 400 million tonne resource there. Right. And how big, and compared with something in Australia, for example, that people might have heard of, what sort of size are we talking about? Uh, I mean, we don't like to compare too much, but um, we, we consider ourselves to be um, probably 15 to 20% larger than they are at the moment. But uh, if you take our measured, indicated, jaw compliant resources, we're probably the largest. Compared with something like Talis and yes. Project at Greenbush? Yes, exactly. Um, Pilbara Minerals have probably got a resource of around about 240 million tonnes or something like that, I think it was. We're sitting at 400. Uh, we now have 275, I think it is, million tonnes of measured indicated. So mm. it's a very big deposit. And looking into those individual pegmatites, I think there's the Roche d'Or deposit with... That's correct. Is that 400 yep. million tonnes? That's the 400 million tonnes. It's right. only uh, approximately 15% of the whole strike length of the deposits that right. we've got there. There's about... Uh, well, there's six major pegmatites, but um, Roche d'Or is certainly one of the bigger ones and historically drilled uh, for tin, so we, we had a bit of information to start with. And uh, Carrier de l'Est, uh, that's possibly even bigger, right? But you've only drilled a, a few holes in that one. A few holes, but the indications are that we're, we're probably sitting on something that's uh, the same, if not larger, than Roche d'Or. Um, we probably think there's about 600 million tonnes sitting in there as a, an exploration target. Um, seven drill holes, it's a stacked vein system as opposed to the one vein system we have at Roche uh, and the top 150 metres of that is where we're very interested because right. the grades are running up to four and a half percent. Wow. Yeah. And how do you see the lithium market at the moment and the demand for the product that you Product we're looking to concentrate. Uh, well look, uh, it's been pretty depressing of late. Uh, prices have been dropping off uh, a fair bit. I think we're down to 450, 475 a tonne. Uh, for SC6, but um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm seeing lots of little markers there that I think are showing that the market's going to turn. Um, Benchmark and a few others are talking about uh, $700 a tonne. I don't think that's unrealistic uh, in the next few years, uh, and that's what we've been basing most of our modelling on. We've got a two-year build frame anyway, so by the time we get into into production, we should be looking at that sort of pricing. And of course, grade is so vital in this in this sector. How does yours compare with your competitors? Uh, well, I think we're probably the second uh, highest grade on average, 1.66% uh, as the, as the feed grade. Uh, as I mentioned at Carrier de Lest, we've got some exceptional grades at surface. We've got uh, up to 4.3%, 4.5% in, in surface chip samples. But more importantly, we're getting sort of 90 metres of 2% uh, material um, mm. coming to surface. So that's very, very high grade. And what are your plans? Project going forward in the next year? A lot of drilling ahead of you? No, uh, not a lot of drilling at all. We've done most of that already. Uh, we have a few little bits and pieces here and there for some infill, um, some uh, geotechnical holes that need to be uh, completed, some uh, hydrogeological holes that need to be completed. But um, aside from Carrier de Lest, we'd like to put some more drill holes in that to get an inferred, measured inferred or indicated inferred resource out of that. Um, the DFS is coming out uh, end of quarter one, so March, uh, that'll be a big turning point for us. Um, all looking very positive at the moment. Uh, and then it's basically sending out for some contracts to start construction, pre-site pre, pre -site works, etc, etc. Uh, and so looking forward, how would you get your product to market? We've investigated uh, several routes to get it out. Uh, initially, we looked to Dar es Salaam, heading straight east, it was the shortest route. Um, but we've settled uh, at the moment, we've settled on going to uh, Angola and the port of Lobito. Um, the reason being we have a shorter distance on the road. It's only a 300 kilometre stretch to get to the railhead in, Tan in uh, the Congo. Uh, and then from there, we'll be able to ship it straight through to the port. Um, it's the simplest way for us to do it. And who do you see as being your ultimate end user? Uh, lithium production plants, hydroxide plant production plants in China. We've, we've signed a deal with Yibin Tianyi, uh, who are constructing a 25,000 tonne per annum hydroxide plant in Sichuan province. Uh, so we'll be supplying to them once we've signed up an offtake agreement. Um, with a port in Libido on the west coast, we'd probably be looking to get some into Europe as well. So 
We'll spread our sides on that. We're not locking ourselves down to one route. We'll still investigate uh, Dar es Salaam and even south into uh, South Africa. There's rumours and talks about having a plant down there as well. So, you know, we're open to suggestions. Um, of course, obviously, in these sort of projects, uh, power is a big issue. Uh, you're in a quite remote location, but I think you've been looking at some hydro and uh, solar projects. That's correct. I mean, our, our camp at the moment has a, has a, a solar powered system there, which uh, we run 24-7 backup generators so that's a smaller side of things but for the actual uh, plant site at, at Roche Dour, uh, we'll need in the order of uh, six to eight megawatts of power for the DMS plant um, and we've just recently signed up an MOU on the on the Pyanamwanga hydro facility which is about 82 kilometers away from us historically that was what powered the city of Monono um, and the tin production from that plant as well so we'll just refurbish that and take that forward. So uh, there's historical mining in the area? Yes, a... yes, yes, yes. So tin, tin was produced there uh, since 1910, um, in earnest since about 1930, uh, through until about 1982. Um, obviously concentrated on the, the low hanging fruit, the, mm. the, the oxide material. And then when it went into the hard rock material, they started to see an increase in costs and tin prices fell down and the operation closed. So there's enthusiasm locally for you to get a project back up and running? Uh, very much so. I mean, we've, we've engaged with the local community a lot. Um, the, the local district administrators and uh, um, chiefs of, uh, of the area are, are looking to, to us to develop a few things. Um, infrastructure is one, water supply. Some of that Pianamwanga hydro facility power will go into the town as well as part of our deal with them. Uh, and yes, we'll, we'll start building up the, the, the social infrastructure there as well with hospitals and schools. Mm. And things like permitting, is that, uh, how's that? Don't happen? see that as an issue at all. That's part of the DFS that we have at the moment. As soon as that's finished and finalised, we lodge that with the government and we make the application for the exchange of a, an exploration licence for an exploitation licence. We think that'll probably take us in the order of three to six months to complete. So in what ways are the government helping support your project in the DRC? Uh, we've only really engaged at the top level recently, but they've been extremely supportive. Uh, we're in discussions with them about a PPP and a special economic zone. Uh, obviously, that will bring, bring huge benefits to the, to the area, the region, uh, through tax exemptions to allow us to invest in infrastructure and supply uh, the necessaries that uh, should be in a community there. And uh, looking at your management team and your board, uh, who's involved in the project? We've just recently taken on a new chairman, um, Dr. John Clark. He's a, a metallurgist, mm -hmm. um, ex Ashanti Goldfields uh, director. Um, he's operated in the DRC before. He's got about 40 years of experience, I think it is, maybe a bit more. Um, but uh, just to be able to bounce ideas off him is great. Uh, as myself, a geologist with 30 years experience. There's a technical director, Graham Johnson, who's got uh, about 30 years of experience as well as a geologist. Uh, um, more so the development through to mining stage, um, whereas I was more of a resource geologist. Uh, we have an engineer on board, we have a lawyer on board, um, we have accounting facilities there as well. Most of all, we've got a uh, project director uh, in Mike Hughes, who's the DFS manager basically. Um, he's an ex Batemans uh, employee, very smart guy who knows his business and he's helping us with that. And then in country, we have a corporate affairs director in the, way, in the, in the, the form of uh, Surgeon Gandu, who's um, a well-known uh, process engineer from Congo um, and with very good uh, contacts and records in country. So it's all the right people for the right places. Absolutely. And in terms of funding your next stage of development, how are you finding the market? Becoming better, um, I think. Uh, I, I think it all comes down to quality of project as well. Um, everybody still looks at it as the DRC and well, takes a little bit off the table for that. But uh, we've had some extremely good meetings uh, here today uh, that I'm very encouraged by the level of interest. Uh, and I think a few NDAs will be signed and we'll be able to move forward with uh, getting some serious money in to get this funded. At the end of the day, it's a lot of money, 250 to $300 million or thereabouts. But I think we'll be able to get that across the line. Fantastic. And for people who want to know more information about your company, Yes, uh, well, there's a website. Um, we have uh, that up and running 24 hours, seven days a week. So that's good marketing for us. We have a um, um, couple of social pages that we do as well. So there's, you know, and then there's a, a straightforward uh, email that you can send through any request to us to see if there's something specific you need to know. And you're listed on the ASX? Listed on the ASX. Dot code? Dot AVZ. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. 
Um, it's great to speak with you and I look forward to seeing lots of news coming out of your project in the year ahead. Thank you. Absolute Thank pleasure. You.